In this first video, we're going to cover doing circuit simulation on a bass guitar preamp circuit using ORCAD Capture and P Spice. The circuit we were working off of originally is the Fender BXR60 bass guitar amplifier, which is shown in this schematic. But the section we're highlighting is the preamp section. This is what we're going to focus on for our simulations. Before getting into the simulations, we actually built the circuit within ORCAT Capture. If you're not familiar with how to do this, you can see the other videos on this YouTube channel for some advice on actually building your circuits. We're just going to scroll through the circuit a little bit to show you the whole circuit, basically. What you're going to see is the main amplification is going to be provided by the TL072 op amps made by Texas Instruments. Um, you may also notice the various test points marked throughout the circuit. They're points V1 through point 0.5 going from your input to your output. We're going to go back and make sure all these potentiometers for the volume and EQ circuit are all set to their typical settings of 0 0.5, which is right in the middle of the treble, the potentiometer. This, this means that there's going to be no equalization taking place on the circuit itself. So we first create a new simulation profile, which we're going to name it AC Sweep 1 since we're doing a AC Sweep. When the simulation profile window comes up, we're going to select the AC Sweep or Noise Analysis type of simulation. We're going to set our beginning frequency as 10 hertz and our end frequency as 50 kilohertz so we go a little bit below and a little bit above the audio frequency range. We want to set the points per decade to 100 to ensure a good resolution on our results. Now that that's set we're going to hit the button to run the simulation. Once that completes the window is going to pop up and we're able to add a trace to that graph. For this we want to show the frequency response and gain of the, of the preamplifier circuit. So we're going to select the dB function which is, allows us to see the gain in decibels. And the dB gain is going to be shown of 0.5 over 0.1 which is basically our output point of the circuit divided by our input point. So it shows the gain of the input versus the output. As you see here in this graph you could see the actual frequency response of the circuit. In the very low frequencies, the gain is very low. As you get to the mid-range, around 1 kilohertz, you can see the gain increases very much compared to where it is at 10 hertz. This is very typical for a bass guitar amplifier. What we're going to do now is we're deleting the open switch on the mid-notch circuit. And we're going to replace it with a closed switch so we can enable the circuit. First, we have to re-add all of our libraries to ORCAD. So to do this, we select all the libraries and click OK. These would already be added when you build your circuit, but since we built our circuit and closed out the software and reopened it to do our simulations, you sometimes have to re-add the libraries. Once the libraries are in, you're going to look for the closed switch. It will be in either the analog or the miscellaneous analog libraries within ORCAD Capture. Once you get the switch selected, put it back in the place where the open switch was before. Now that the switch is in place, we're going to rerun the same simulation profile as we did before. Again, adding the same traces, we're going to find the gain in dB of 0.5 divided by 0.1, so the gain again of the output compared to the input of the circuit. The 
As we see from the resulting graph, you could see the big dip in the mid-range frequencies once the switch is enabled. You see a very big dip right around about 700 hertz. You see a very a lot of attenuation, a lot less gain than the surrounding frequencies. This purpose of the switch in a bass guitar amplifier would be to remove those middle frequencies to make the low and high frequencies stand out more. Now that we go back to the rest of our simulations, we're actually going to remove that switch again and replace it back with an open switch to disengage the mid cut or the mid notch circuit. Once that mid notch circuit is disengaged, we're going to add parameters to our simulation. So that way we can control the set levels of our potentiometers. You do that by selecting the parameter tool from the special library. Once that parameter tool is selected, you want to change the setting of our first volume pot to the word set. That will be a parameter rather than a set number. Once you do that, you double click on the parameter tool. It'll bring, it'll bring up this menu and you're going to click on new column. It's click yes to tell if you're sure that you want to create the new column. Gonna name the new column set, which is the name of your parameter, and set the default value to 0 0.5. Then we're gonna change the simulation profile to add a global parameter sweep. We're gonna sweep the parameter set from 0 to 1 in increments of 0.25. Once this is set, we're gonna click OK and run our simulation. Once the simulation's up, we're again going to choose the same points we have been for our traces. It's going to be the gain in decibels of 0.5 over 0.1, the output over the input. Here we can see the effect of varying the volume pot in the circuit. As you see, as the volume pot is turned up, the gain increases. We're going to do this same thing again for the high frequency equalizer knob or potentiometer. We set our volume pot back to the normal setting of 0.5 and change our high frequency equalizer pot to the parameter value set. So it's again going to be varied from 0 up to 1 in increments of 0.25. We're going to run the simulation one more time and add the traces again of the gain of our output over our input. Once this is up, we can see the effects of the high, the high frequency EQ pot. As you can see, there's a major boost or cut around, right around 6K as a center frequency. We continue, we do this with all the other frequencies of the equalizer. The low frequency, we see the boost right around 75 hertz. In all of these equalizers, you get a boost or gain of about 12 decibels, as you can see from the graphs. From here, we run the simulation again. We're just going to jump straight to the results, showing the low mid EQ settings being varied. For this, you see for the low mids, you get a variance right around 600 or right around 600 hertz. For again for our high mids, same simulation and right around 2 kilohertz, you could see a boost in cut in the frequency response. So that's it for our simulations. In our next video, we're going to show you how to design a PCB in, with ORCAD Capture in PCB Editor.